Hey guys, tabletop review of the uh, Swiss Army Large Splitting Axe. Pick this thing up, $30 shipped. And I'll put a link. Um, it was actually found on eBay, surprisingly. And the seller uh, had them for $29.99, free shipping. Which is uh, a really actually good price because typically you find these things online for $39 plus shipping or even like $49 plus shipping. So this thing was a, a fantastic price. And you can never go wrong when it comes to the uh, Swiss made axes. They're just really well built and they're always uh, just fantastic. And before I get into the specifics, I want to say this thing is completely untested. I'm not going to get a chance to use this until this weekend. And I wanted to put that out there so you all understood that before you spent time listening. Um, like I said, I'm just not going to have time until this weekend, but I wanted to post this up. So you can see what you're getting in case you wanted to order one of these because obviously they're not going to be around long at $29.99. So I wanted to put that up to you guys as quick as I could so that you guys had an opportunity to buy one of these if you're interested. So this thing is a minor style axe, meaning it has a very short handle. It's a 20 inch handle on... With the head, the overall length is about 24 inches, so it's very short. You're, this is not, you know, a felling axe by any means. This is a uh, a splitting axe, a short handled splitting axe, or often referred to as like a minor style axe. Something you would use in tight, cramped quarters, or uh, maybe in really thick brush, that kind of thing. Um, this is not a forest axe, this is not a pack axe, this is not anything like that. Cutting edge is about four and a half inches long, and the uh, weight on the head about four and a half pounds. This thing is not for the faint of heart. This is very heavy for the size. In fact, the only other company that offers anything similar to this would be Council Tools, and I know they have like a four and a half and a five and a half inch uh, Dayton that they offer on a uh, a twenty inch handle. Um, Let's, let's be frank here, guys. This is not for beginners. Um, as much You may like this and you may, you know, want it, but bear in mind if you're going to use this, this is not for beginners. That short handle brings a lot of risk in that you could bring that thing down and uh, bury this in your shin. You want to make sure you're using a proper chopping block. And then number two, the weight on that, it's a little heavier than most people are used to. And especially used to on such a short handle, it's very easy for something like this to get away from you. So, work up to this, guys. This is not, it should not be your first axe. And of course, there's no palm swell on the back. So, you're definitely going to want to do a little work to uh, fix that. So, let's get into this. And what, now that we got the numbers down, let's talk about fit and finish and all that. And then we'll wrap up. Uh, first of all, the actual axe head itself, the fit and finish is gorgeous it's just you know like with anything swiss made it's just perfect this is one of the nicest finishes i've ever seen on an axe it's uh absolutely beautiful it's got that little red kind of racing stripe onto it but yeah the metal itself no dings no pits you can see it's kind of uh brushed but uh almost like a mirror polish on it. it's pretty close to a mirror polish it's uh it's impressive. It's a hickory handle, and this handle is not conventional size. You are not going to be able to find a replacement for this handle, guys. This handle is one huge chunk of wood. You have to understand that, that this uh, part of the handle here is nearly three inches long. If you break this handle, you're going to have to, uh, you're definitely going to have to do some carving. Let's just put it that way. I don't know of anyone who's selling replacements at this time. And I don't know of any other axe heads that are using that exact uh, size handle. So it's really going to be a pain if you split this handle. But if you split this handle, you're more of a man than me. This thing is gigantic. I mean, this handle is, it's a handful. I mean, it really is. It is one big, gigantic slug of hickory. And, of course, you have this big area on the top here that is, you know, literally three inches thick. I mean, this is going to take some work to destroy it. So, 
but the handle. Um, let's talk about the grain. Move this table a little bit. So you can see the end grain. The end grain is, of course, opposite of what you would usually expect. Normally, you want your grain to go the same direction as the head, but in this one, it's going opposite. And a lot of people are going to say, oh my god, that's terrible. Okay. Yes, it's not ideal. It is not ideal any way, shape, or form. But however, you have to understand that the U.S. Forest Service does not care about grain orientation. They prefer it to be the, you know, the right direction, but they do not reject handles solely for grain orientation. And I've used both. I've used them. And, you know, I don't see much of a difference with grain orientation. Yeah, they, you know, maybe they break a little easier, but nine tenths out of ten, they break because of misuse, not because of anything else. Typically, if I have an axe handle break, it's nine tenths out of ten because of an overstrike. So, just wanted to put that out there. As much as people may not like it, you know, I don't know how yours is going to come, but mine came with the grain uh, across like that. But the Forest Service, like I said, that's not part of their requirement. So if this were an American axe, that would actually be completely acceptable. There's pretty much no grain runoff. The grains are very straight, and there's no runoff except a little bit. Here there's a little bit of runoff, but that's not going to affect anything because it is on the back of the head. But the front area and all that, the entire length of the handle, the grain is straight top to bottom. You can follow the grain lines all the way, so there's no... Uh, runoff except this section here and that runoff is only because we have the handle getting wider not because it's twisted or anything like that so the grain on this is actually really good it's got some really nice tight rings on it and i think this handle will definitely hold up a uh, a long long time and i know the snobs out there are going to say oh great you know the grain's wrong but guess what guys get over it this thing's not going to shatter over it and it will be fine you know i know it's the law now that the grain, you know, it has to be in that one direction. But like I said, the Forest Service doesn't care. All they care about is that there's no grain runoff and that there's not too much uh, heartwood in there. Um, next, the actual sharpness is poor. This is not sharpened. And this is very common with axes, guys. And I know, oh, if you buy a weatherlings or a grain for it, it's going to come sharp. Okay, but you're also paying hundred plus dollars for it. This is not sharpened. So a lot of people are going to say it came dull. No, it came not sharpened. You can see there is no edge bevel cut into that at all. Nothing at all cut in. So you're going to have to sharpen this when you get it. And that's fine with me. You know what guys, I'd rather put my own edge on this than some factory edge I'm not going to like. So, be forewarned, if you buy one of these you're going to have to sharpen it. In fact, you can see it's almost kind of like flattened across the edge. That's because they don't. There's no edge cut into that. You'll be able to fix that in no time. But I do have to point it out. Um, but like I said, that's fine with me, guys. Council Tools does the same thing. They ship their axes unsharpened. A lot of companies do it now. It's a liability thing, it's safer for their workers, helps keep costs down, and then the end user can put whatever edge on it they like, which, you know, if you're someone who doesn't like to sharpen things, yeah, that sucks for you, but someone like me, you know, I prefer the ability to put a uh, custom edge on it. Last item, we'll move this again, is the hang job. As you can see, we have a little bit of a gap in the back. But overall, there's a very good wood wedge in there. No metal wedge. No gaps along the side whatsoever. No gaps along the front. Just that little gap in the back. Now, is that a deal breaker for me? Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. But at the same time, I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm going to use a little syringe. And I'm going to kind of like inject some uh, boiled linseed oil down in there to help... Uh, protect that wood and then when I'm done with that I'll put a little epoxy there and seal that up with some uh, epoxy and that'll be just fine that will this head will probably never shake loose it's uh, it's done very well it's a very you know good job on the wood wedge it's in there nice and straight everything's good just minus that little tiny gap but 
That happens, guys. Even your best of axes will have them. Most places, to be honest, just cover it up with wood putty and stuff like that. So it's not a big deal. Like I said, I'm going to put some boiled linseed oil down there and then cover that up with a little epoxy. And one other thing I forgot to mention is that your handle is unfinished, which is another big deal for me. I can put my own finish on this and seal it however I choose. So overall, I think this is a great project axe. Um, number one, like I said, I can sharpen it, put whatever edge I want on it. If I want a super sharp, you know, shaving sharp edge, I can do that. Or I can leave it kind of dull, a little, not dull, but like a, with a, a strongly convex edge for for splitting and then I can do whatever I want with this handle. I don't have to sand anything, I don't have to remove anything, no stickers, nothing. I really appreciate that because I, I really get tired of buying things, especially axes, and having to spend all that time sanding down the handle, taking you know coatings off the head, doing all these things that I just shouldn't have to do. So there you go. Okay, uh, usefulness. What is this good for? Number one, this is going to be a fantastic kind of like car camping act. Something you can bring with you to split wood, you know, at deer camp, bear camp, moose camp, whatever you're doing. This is something great to leave at the car for the end of the night, you know, when you're settling down and having that big bonfire before you go to sleep. Great splitter. You know, it's something you can fit in the trunk of your car, no problem. It's not too long. It is, uh, like I said, it's not for everyone. It's a very short handled and very heavy, so it's gonna take some skill and some practice getting used to this. But uh, I do like how compact it is. I can very easily, you know, throw this in the, in the back of my car, in my trunk. I have a very small kind of trunk area. So something like this actually works out quite well for me. Um, you know, like I said, it's too heavy to pack. You're not going to put this in your backpack. You're not going to carry it on your belt. This is a big, heavy beast. So this is going to be your camp splitter, your backyard splitter, your, your you know, this is something you're going to use around the house, around the campsite that kind of thing this is not a this is not a forest axe this is not a you know a bushcraft axe this is a, a big large splitter could you use it to fell a tree sure you know if you want to spend some time thin, thinning out the bit and uh working on that yeah you could probably use this to do a little felling is it the best tool for that absolutely not but you could get away with it so there it is guys i'm going to show you this thing after i do some work to it i'm going to put a proper edge on it seal the handle and do all the other work I'd mentioned and then eventually we'll take this thing out and test it and show you guys but like I said I wanted to show it to you now so you can see exactly what you're getting if you decide to buy one of these.